The race to create the next big thing in tech is in high gear. It's a virtual reality device. At a conference in California this week, Google handed out a kit to make a virtual reality headset. All you need is some cardboard and a smartphone. But as Bigad Shaban shows us, Facebook's costs a whole lot more. Are you ready to go in? I'm ready. Okay. Professor Mark Bolas invited us inside his virtual world that's been 10 years in the making. I'm putting my hand out as if I can touch it. It's so easy to forget this isn't real. Research here at the University of Southern California's Mixed Reality Lab is focused on turning virtual reality into an everyday reality. Where are we right now with the technology? Virtual reality is about to take off in a way that I don't think anybody can fully comprehend. The origins of virtual reality date back nearly 30 years, but the technology struggled with uncomfortable headsets that often left users feeling nauseous. Now, stronger motion sensors and better displays are changing that and the future. The way that people collaborate and communicate is going to shift to where physical presence isn't as important as virtual presence. As easy as putting on the goggles. You put on the goggles and now you have basically all of humanity and the entire internet at your disposal. Bolas posted USC's findings and designs online for free. That helped a little-known startup company named Oculus VR develop its own virtual reality headset, the Oculus Rift. Their latest prototype caught the attention of Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg. So much so, he decided to buy the company. When you have a powerhouse like Facebook willing to pay $2 billion for this kind of technology, what does that tell you? Uh, it tells me that they see the future really accurately. All eyes were on Oculus at this month's E3 video game conference in Los Angeles. But Wired Magazine's Peter Rubin believes virtual reality will soon go far beyond gaming. And this is where people are going to be socializing, going to be communicating, going to be consuming media, playing games, doing work, getting educated. You can look at art. You're not behind a red rope. You're not looking at the Mona Lisa. You're up at the Mona Lisa and you're examining the pores on her face. Words with Friends creator Paul Bettner was one of the first programmers to begin designing video games for Oculus. You can look left, right, up, down, and you see all parts of the world. Yep. He gave us a sneak peek of his game Lucky Tales, made for the still unreleased headset. The bullseye's following exactly where I'm looking. Yeah, that's right. What do you think this can offer consumers that they've never gotten before? I think what it really offers is they is that childhood dream of being inside the game. USC is now bringing that technology to the U.S. Navy. Welcome to combat. As part of a government contract, the university designed a virtual world that turns plastic tables into digital menus that can be used to man a ship. Crews can even get a bird's eye view without ever leaving the control room. It's like I'm right in the helicopter hundreds of feet above the water. Bolas has also been working on a cheaper, more mobile version of the technology. He's pairing smartphones with $2 lenses and special software to create his own handmade headsets. Look inside. And now you're on the surface of Mars. Go ahead and look around. Do you think a virtual reality set could be as common one day as, say, a smartphone? We see smartphones as the way that we brought computers out into the real world. But virtual reality is really the way we're now going to go into the virtual world. And I think it'll be as common as smartphones. We'll all have one and we'll bring them with us. The Oculus headset will likely go on sale next year with a possible price tag around $300. And the anticipation surrounding the new virtual reality gear couldn't be any more real. For CBS This Morning Saturday, Begat Shaban, Los Angeles.